Hey everybody, welcome back to Change Your Perspective, Change Your Awareness, Change Your Life. I'm Dr. McLena. I am a leadership consultant, a logotherapist, and a meaningful life life coach. And I am hopeful that this series will help you figure out how to lead to live, live to lead, honestly, and kind of give you the understanding that being a good leader is literally the best thing for your life. And so um, what I want to talk about today is one of those many things that keep us out of our leadership skill set, and that is the people around us. <laughs> uh, the people around us very often do not help us get to where we need to be. Okay, and I'm going to say that, and I know it's going to be a little bit difficult to hear. We are the sum total of the five people we hang out with the most. And this is not my stat. This is a pretty well-known stat. I don't think it's subtle for me to say it, right? We are the sum total of the people we hang out with the most. So check out the people around you. Who do you speak to the most? Who do you talk to the most? What is their mindset? How much money do they make? What do they do with their free time? Right? We, more often than not, stay at a level that we're comfortable with because of the people that we're around. We're very afraid to lose people on the journey. And so I think there's something nice and something admirable about staying in the same place you've always been in, right? Your hometown, hanging out with the same people you've always hung out with. And there's nothing wrong with that. But it will keep you in the same places with the same people. And that's fine because like I said the other day, leadership is not necessarily ambitious. The thing that is tricky about those situations is that you stay the person that everybody's always thought that you were. There's no real room for growth there. A lot of the times in those kind of circles, you will find people talking about the same old stories from 5, 10, 15 years ago, right? And so there's nothing new. So check the influence, check the people around you, check the topics of their conversations, right? What are they talking about? Leaders are very mindful about their resources. We don't have a lot, okay? Resources that we have personally as people include our time, our energy, our attention, and our money. Team. Okay, team, time, energy, attention, money. We only have so much of it. So time, energy, attention, and money, we wanna be very mindful of what we do with these because everybody's trying to get all of this all the time. As a leader, you also have those four plus information, space, and timing. Okay, timing is a tricky one that um, leaders really good leaders No, timing is always working in your favor. Everything works out as it's supposed to in the right time. Timing is the hardest of all of the seven. And yes, look, there's seven. There's always seven, right? So when we are coming into our own abilities, paying attention to where our time goes, because that is the it is not a renewable resource. It is linear in this dimension. It's only going one way. Okay. We are, I watched something the other day um, from this astrophysicist talking about how technically we do have access to the fourth dimension. The fourth dimension being time. Third dimension being space, right? With length, height. Um, two dimension being length. With one dimension being length, right? one plane, 2D plane, 3D plane, 4D plane is time. That's too much, just put it on the shelf. Um, but the thing about our time as a resource is that it's not, lin it's not renewable here and it is linear. We don't have the ability to time travel back to the past and we don't have the ability to time travel into the future. Now we try to do that in our minds a lot, right? Emotional time traveling is a thing that people do. When you're depressed, nine times out of 10, you're thinking and dwelling on the past. 
when you're anxious nine times out of 10, you're jumping ahead to the future. You're afraid because you don't know what's coming versus you're upset about what's gone. Depression and anxiety is an emotional time travel venture most of the time. Leaders are very mindful of their time. They're very mindful of their energy. They're very mindful of their attention, right? So if you're in good leadership, you're not going to like lose six hours scrolling or like on Netflix. You're just not going to do it. Your time is too valuable, right? Your time is too valuable. It's like, it's not that I don't have time for this. I have time for this. I just don't want to devote this time to this whatever event, whatever thing, you know, my time is better served doing this thing over here. Leaders are very aware of the influence around them, right? So they're not going to take their time on shit that doesn't matter. And so good, effective leaders are very aware of who they surround themselves with because people we surround ourselves with can be a drain on our resources or a boost to our resources, right? So if we're surrounding ourselves with a whole bunch of our work colleagues outside of work, for what? For what? Well, it's a nice thing to do. It's a social thing. No, I got other things to do. My time is better allocated somewhere else. Thank you very much. I spent all day at work with you. I'm not going to do that now. It makes no sense. Why am I doing that? I've got other things going on. Now, in your other time, you should be building something for yourself, right? Good leaders build for themselves. It doesn't matter what that is. You could be building a family. You could be building a home. You could be building a relationship. You could be building a business. You could be building something else, right? You can be building whatever. But if you're not building you're probably not in your most specified purpose, right? We're not here to just consume, despite what consumerism would have you think, right? Good leaders, all right, I'm going to keep going back to all the things that good leaders know. Good leaders know we're not here to consume. We're here to give back. We're here to have a symbiotic relationship with everything around us. i fill these needs, you fill my needs. It's a constant reciprocity. It's a reciprocal endeavor. Consumerism is parasitic. So if you've got people around you who are consumers of your time, your energy, your attention, and your money, they're parasites. And you are their host. And you are not in good leadership because everybody else has control over what you do with your limited finite resources. And so... All that to say, good leaders guard well their time, their energy, their attention, and money. I'm not saying they're hermits. I'm not saying they don't spend anything. I'm not saying they don't go anywhere. I'm not saying they don't pay attention to anything. I am saying that good leaders are judicious with their time, energy, attention, and money so that they use it to what is building to their future goals. And so to that point, good leaders have goals. People who are lost have no direction. They are aimless. They have no goals. They just kind of go through the drudgery of life. They're not actually choosing life. They're choosing to be stagnant. They're choosing death energy. They're not choosing life energy. Good leaders are constantly choosing life. Right? They're constantly choosing to learn more, to heal more, to help more, to be more, to get more aware. And part of good leadership is getting aware of what am I doing with my resources, right? What am I doing with my time? What am I doing with my energy? What am I doing with my attention? What am I doing with my money? Because we live in a society that wants us to be consumers and not good leaders. We live in a society that wants us to be followers, okay? Look at anybody around who has done anything. They are leaders in their field. They are thought leaders. They are 
at the forefront of things. And then what you're going to say is, McLean and not everybody can be a leader. That is not true. Everybody is a leader. Some people just choose not to step into it. Everybody is a leader. That is everybody's capacity is to lead themselves first and foremost. I am my own first leader and I am my own first follower. And I say that all the time when I'm posting content, I'm like, I post this for me and one other person, whoever out there needs it. Feel free to let me know if you're the person. Feel free to let me know if you like this series. Like I said, leadership is like top thing that I like to talk about because it is so crucial to changing and choosing the life you want to live. When you get into good leadership and you start really getting a handle on your time, your energy, your attention, and your money, and you choose life, you choose growth physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, intellectually, sexually, financially, what you will find is that you ain't got time for anybody else's stuff because you're so busy trying to hone in your own stuff. Ain't nobody got time to be focused on your neighbors because you're going to be focusing on you and your life over here. And whatever you're working to build, and the first thing we got to work to build is ourselves because we live in a society that wants to tear us down, disempower us, make us followers. Some of us grew up in houses with parents who were well-intentioned but made us followers and disempowered us and didn't just let us be what we were. Again, to this point, I always say thank God for my mom because she just let us be what we are. Let us make mistakes and let us grow from them and learn from them. I don't know that any of us made the same mistake twice. I'm saying my brother and my sister probably didn't make any mistakes. I certainly made quite a great many, okay? My brother and my sister are perfect, by the way. It doesn't matter if they're not perfect. They are perfect. But all that to say, right, good leaders check their influences and they keep around them people who are going to help them grow. And they're not afraid to drop the people who aren't going any further, right? It's a, it's a beautiful thing to let things fall away as they need to fall away. There's nothing wrong with that. We get so attached, like the consumers that we are, the followers, the poor managers that we are, we get very attached to things. And it's like, I don't want to let this thing go. It's like, but life is telling you to let it go. Okay, new thing coming in. Seasons change. People move through things. People grow. People go. Nothing wrong with it. People's lives going in this direction, your life going in this direction. Hey, that's fine. When we try to diminish ourselves, to make ourselves smaller, to kind of accommodate the people around us, because we don't want anything to shift or change, we're not in good leadership. Good leadership is aware of influence. One, the influence they have on others. Two, the influence that they're getting from the outside. Three, the influence of the people they're hanging out with. Good leaders are always aware of from where they're getting their information, right? So because we're good at guarding energy and attention, we're not paying attention to stuff that doesn't matter. You, you really won't catch me watching the news. Why? It's not important. Well, don't you need to know what's going on in the world? No, I don't. No, I don't. You know how I know I don't? Because we didn't have TV for 70 years. And people did just fine. Right? We didn't have TikTok. We didn't have text messaging. We didn't have all the things that we have now. The, the thing that people don't understand about the news is that it is a recently, like, developed phenomenon. People don't realize how recent these things are. The news is about a hundred years old. You know how long people have been around for? 6,000, okay? 6,000 in this dimension, these bodies, 6,000. 2023 from Christ, 
Christ back to Adam, 4,000. 6,000 years. That's it. And of those 6,000 years, we've had news for 100 of them. So, no, I don't watch the fucking news. Wasting my time. The important headlines come through, and that's fine. Is the news helping you build? Well, that depends. Are you trying to be a journalist? All right, well, now we've got a different story. Hold on. Right? It depends on everybody's personal journey. Good leaders are in their purpose. They're aware. So what doesn't work for me, I don't watch the news, would not be productive for somebody who is trying to be a journalist or a newscaster. Well, that makes sense now, doesn't it? Right? So good leadership is very aware of the influence. Leadership is influence. John Maxwell's definition. Leadership is influence. And good leaders are very aware of influence at all times. What's in inputting? What's coming in? Outputting? What's going out? Good leaders are good communicators, right? They're aware that their language, that their words hold power. And so they don't want to use them haphazardly. I will say a lot of the times the things that I get, two things really. Michalina, you seem so real. I am. I worked hard at it. Michalina, you are so articulate. Thank you. I worked hard at that too. Okay. These are intentional things. They didn't just show up. I worked hard at them. I get a lot, McLean, you're so pretty. I didn't work at that. So thank you, but I didn't work at that. I was born with this. So I appreciate it. It's very sweet for you to say that, but I didn't work at that. So I'm not, you know, as proud of it. I'm, I'm grateful to God for the way I look. But my ability to be real and transparent, to be authentic, to be self-aware, to be honest, those are things I've worked at. Those are the things I'm proud of. We will talk more about um, authentic leadership. I told you there are a lot of leadership styles, okay? I told you I, m I mentioned my North House Anthology, 8th edition. And so um, authentic leadership is one of the multiple styles that is in this text. This is my jam. This is what I wrote my dissertation on. We're going to talk more about it because I really do work hard to be the most authentic leader that I can be. And there is an actual framework and a template for what that looks like and what that means. So we are going to go through some of these styles so that um, you get to decide who you want to show up as in leadership, right? Assuming you're following, assuming you like this, assuming this feels good for you, right? So hopefully I'm making a compelling argument to you and for you about how leadership is super important and how um, if you're not in great leadership, let's get there, okay? Because you can choose your life by changing your life. You can change your life by changing your perspective and changing your awareness. And that is why we are here. That is what we do on this channel, right? So if you need help with one-on-one -on -one work to really excavate the stuff, shoot me um, a comment below or follow me on my socials and you know DM me through there. Keep watching here if this is helpful to you. Watch other podcasts, other YouTube channels, also on leadership, which will be helpful to you. Do your own research, I always suggest that. Um, and use the free resources that are out there, always suggest that. Don't pay for a program you're not ready for, right? So I hope this is helpful, I hope you're enjoying it. I am obviously enjoying bringing it to you. And um, like, subscribe, share the channel, grow the channel if you are enjoying it. And I will see you guys in the next video.